This episode of Express Training Bites is brought to you by Promo Corner. Are you looking to support a sales campaign and reach a larger audience? Raise your brand awareness with content sponsorships. For more information, reach out to sales at promocorner.com. Again, this is Express Training Bites. I am Brandon Petridge, the Digital Media Director for Promo Corner, and with me today, I have probably one of the best closers in promo industry, and that's my own opinion, with Nadav Raviv from Amplify Marketing Solutions, and he is going to be talking to us. We're going to be having a good little back and forth conversation about best pitch practices. So, Nadav, how are you doing, man? Well, um, I'm glad that I'm tan because I'm blushing. So thank you for that. Actually, I guess I should thank the beach last weekend. Man, I'm great. Uh, like I told you, I, I was working on a client for about three years and three, four years. Finally closed the deal. On, I mean, it's small, but you know what? That's all I can ask for. I'm thrilled. That is awesome. That is awesome. So we are going to be talking about pitch practices today. So if you're watching this live, go ahead and put any questions you have for Nadav over in the messaging right over there in the site on Facebook on either Promo Corner's Facebook page or Promo Show's Facebook page. So we're going to get right into this. So we've had Nadav on before, and he talked to us a little bit about when you should use virtual samples versus when you should use spec samples. And he gave us a lot of great details. Well, that whole idea that whole conversation sparked me to want him or to want me to have him back onto this show so that he could talk about how he actually gets those pitches what what does he do how does he get these meetings how does he get into the amazing situations that he puts himself into so the <laughs> first thing that we want to talk about and I always see all the time is everybody always short changes themselves on their elevator pitch so Nadav do you have an elevator pitch um, I would say no. So one of the things that's really bothered me recently is on LinkedIn, when you link in with somebody, you connect with somebody, and then they're like, I was in the area and just so happened to blah, blah, blah. And I know your business. Well, you don't, you don't know me. You don't know my business. You don't know anything about what I do. I mean, I'm completely different than, than, you know, 21,999 other promo companies that do exactly what I do in a way, right? I do it my own way. And I have a lot of different avenues that I create my own way. So I, I and, and I also feel it's not, it's not fair for our clients for us to have an elevator pitch. Yes, we use the, term, the same terminologies, but it's not fair to them that if you're coming and just spraying and praying, mm -hmm. that's not what we do. You know, you really, you really, and I'm probably going to be jumping ahead in some of these things, but you really have to do, you have to do your homework. I mean, you really have to know these clients and know what makes them tick and know what their campaigns are about. And, you know, going back to LinkedIn, I mean, that's one of the, the, the places that I utilize the most. I mean, I really do my homework. I comment on their stuff. I see what their, you know, I see what their, um, you know, what their marketing campaigns or what their articles are about. And not only that, I watch a lot of Gary Vee. I mean, I know you know that. Um, and, you know, he talks about don't just be a fly on the wall and like the comment. Go and comment on the comment. Start the dialogue. This morning, I've got a very big uh, um, restaurant chain, uh, what, actually one of the largest growing restaurant chains in the country right now. Yeah, we do their IHOP. <laughs> um, not them, uh, unfortunately. But, um, you know, they, they, uh, she said something about being in the service industry and how that kind of, you know, helped mold her into who she is. And I'm like, boom, hit the nail on the head. I was in service industry when I was 15 years old up until, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And being able to anticipate like when the, I was a bartender, when the client walks up and, you know, whether it's a regular, whether it's not, you can see their body language, you can see their, their, their movements. You can tell on their face. Exactly. This guy doesn't want to be talked to. He wants his drink. He wants his food. He wants to go home. This guy wants you to know everything that you never wanted to know about him, but you're going to sit there and you're going to listen. You're going to nod. You're going to enjoy it. Right. <laughs> but, or, or this guy, you know, wants to hear everything there is, you know, to know about you. So you really have to, and the say, and and that that goes true to the to the pitch that we're talking about right now. You have to see them. You have to know what's going on. Yeah, Zoom makes it a little bit more difficult to see like their body movements and stuff. And yeah. you know, there's all these um, there's all these physical traits and, and and ticks that you can pick up on in person that a little bit harder. But I mean, I, but I know that there's been some stories about like or, or studies, I, I should say, done about like the Zoom. Uh, the Zoom physical traits and characteristics. So if you read stuff like that and you pay attention to your clients, it's what they want. You have to be 
consultative in this day and age. Um, I, I go back to one of the things, one of my mantras is always like, and, and, and not saying this is in a bad way, but I don't really pitch people anymore. I let them see what I'm doing. And if they want to be a part of it, then they understand what I'm doing. If they don't, that's cool. I understand. But, you know, I want them to be like, that looks fun. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of that. Look mm -hmm. at what he's doing. And I don't want to ask for your business. I want you to come to me and be like, dude, what's up? Like, why haven't you begged me yet? You know what I mean? Like, you know, and so that's, that's kind of the way I look at it. I've got some fantastic clients. I started my company nine months ago. I set a goal. I crushed that within three months. I doubled that in November, December. I, I don't even know where I'm going right now. Like, I mean, I wanted to rewrite my business plan. My, my, my old boss, Jeff Grapando, you know, grip, our buddy grip. Yeah. Uh, he would, he would probably kick my butt because I haven't retuned my, my, my business plan, but I'm waiting for the end of the fiscal year. You know, I'm like, but I probably should, you know what I mean? So anyway. <laughs> no, that is, that's awesome. I mean, so you, you kind of laid out what makes a, if they, if you are going to use a pitch. So if somebody just comes up to you, like you said, you were on the beach and they say, Hey man, what do you do? Like there, you have that 30 seconds to encapsulate them. Do you, do you have like something that you say quick and fast and is it standard or do you tailor it <laughs> to everybody that you talk to? All right. So maybe I do have an elevator. Pitch there you there. go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yes and no, obviously it's different for, for different people. Um, m my, my, uh, my avenues of work are very interesting because I have my, my fingers in a lot of cookie jars. Um, but you know, so if the, somebody says something, you know, I say, yeah, you know, koozies, cups, mugs, blah, 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 pants, hats, shirts. I do that. And then I say, you know, sometimes just depending on the person, I'll say, you know, if you could hold it down, I can put a logo on it. <laughs> so I can literally hold you down and put the logo on you right now. Um, but I also, you know, I also have that, that, that kind of hook, line and sinker with, with my NASCAR stuff. And I mean, once people are like, oh, you work in NASCAR too. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. with that NASCAR stuff, I'm able to meet clients. I'm also able to help my clients get in, get more exposure into a sports marketing world that they might not have had that avenue to, to before. And man, I, I've got some big stuff I haven't told you about, but I had, a, had some, two very big meetings in the last two weeks, um, whatever. And, uh, you know, soon if, if things go well, this could catapult me well beyond my wildest dreams, you know, so, and, and then what do we do after we capture those dreams? We make new dreams. We go to after those as well. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right. So I think, you do, you just figured out you do kind of have an elevator pitch, but like you said, you do kind of tune it to the person that you're talking to. And I think one of the biggest fears that the, the other average distributor would have, or the majority of distributors in this industry have is they always worry about their elevator, their elevator pitch, pigeonholing them into one specific product or into one specific realm. So I think you covered all of it by saying, if you can hold it down, I can put a logo on it. I love that, man. That is so fantastic. All right. So we're going to move on to the next step. You've done your pitch. You've got somebody interested. They're, they're jazzed to see you. You and I are on a uh, Facebook Live uh, video meeting with them. How do you prepare for the next meeting, for the actual sit-down boardroom style meeting? What do you do to get going, like in terms of educating yourself on the customer? What kind of products do you choose? All of that stuff. So going back to LinkedIn, do your research, do your homework. I mean, it's so important that you really get to know your audience. You, there's what we call trunk slammers. Like that's kind of the old way of selling. Like you just go and you throw some stuff on the table. And like, what do you want to buy? Mm -hmm. That's not really what I do. I like to not come with too many items. Maybe it's just sell promos. You know, maybe it's just my cork mug that I love. Maybe it's, uh, you know, the, the gator my gator that, well, my, well, it's not totally compliant. It says that I care about, you know, the other people, uh, maybe it, it's a pen, a writing instrument, um, you know, whatever that is. And then they kind of see it and they're like, Oh, that's cool. Or if you can get a little bit of information before you go in. So what are, can you tell me what you're working on? Can you tell me, uh, maybe some campaigns you have going on? Are you looking at hats? Are you looking at patches? Are you looking at this? Are you looking at that? Do you have any trade shows coming up? Are you have any outdoor events? Um, you know, and then obviously going back to what we were talking about before, rely on your vendors, man. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't express that enough. Yesterday I had an SPPA show. It was a great Mark Ferrar and the whole crew did a, a fantastic job. So shout out to them. Uh, 115 people, which is the biggest uh, show they've had, uh, you know, um, since COVID. So kudos to them. 30 vendors. Uh, Amy Krieger from AAA Innovations knocked out of the park the day before with two of my biggest clients. Um, really, I mean, some stuff that 
actually one's one's local to you not saying anything but <laughs> hopefully hopefully they're gonna pull a trigger on some stuff you know with some, some uh, with some local spend and then hopefully kick that up to the corporate office and, and get some more uh, spend on that but you know um you really just have to you really have to do your homework again i can't i can't ex express that enough and, and just you know go in and tailor and once you're in the room don't be afraid to ask for a small opportunity you know oh you've got something coming up i don't want to you know obviously obviously you're there for a reason there there is some sort of pain point where they're letting you get your foot in the door mm -hmm. so if you're okay with asking that again you got to feel the room you can't like you don't want to put them in a weird position i mean yesterday we were at the SPPA show i look over at one of my actually one of my best friends uh you know here locally competitor whatever competitor um you know peer we're not competitors we go. help each yeah. other <laughs> and I, I mean i've been i've been even thinking about asking him like dude listen you know there's some things can we you know maybe come together on some stuff with these guys and, and hit, hit, hit them like you know help them out the best we can and, and figure out a way to you know split it i mean i don't you know i want them to be happy and i want him to be happy and i want me to be happy and you know i don't i don't like being confrontational but you know i mean it was it was that weird two second awkwardness and you're like oh what's up like how you doing I, he's going to do a great job showing you all this stuff so you know getting getting to know them and getting to know the stuff and then really um asking for that opportunity and making sure that you know i play a great second i don't have to be your primary guy i don't want to be your koozie order guy i don't want to be your lanyard guy I want to be your koozie with a message. I want to be your lander with a purpose. I want to be your creative guy. Have you seen these badass thoughts that we can do? Have you seen this, you know, full color graphic, blah, 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 we can do this full wrap on a, on a cup, a tumbler, whatever, whatever that looks like. So that's the kind of mentality I have, you know, and then once you're in there, I'll take your koozie order. I'll take your, you know, your one color imprint t-shirt order. I don't have a problem with that, but I want to, you know, I don't want to be that order taker. I want to be that proactive, creative, um, you know, solution driven, solution based uh, uh, person for you, you know, so that's, that's my mentality about, about, about me and my clients. Oh, I love that. And that's, that kind of leads me into my last little question in this section. And, and because I think one of the biggest pet peeves with or one of the biggest pain points is, is just even the fear of scheduling that meeting and waiting for, you know, cause you always read all those business books and uh, books and the first one that speaks loses. So everybody's always asking questions and nothing ever gets done. So when somebody finally says that they do want a meeting with you and do you go to them and say, well, what time of day works for you? Or do you have a set time that you always pitch people? Like, I want to see you around lunchtime, or I want to see you in the afternoon, or I want to see you first thing in the morning. When do you find meetings work the best for you and your clients? So, you know me, I'm a foodie. So I love to eat and I, I work out only because I eat so much. Um, but, you know, so I like, I really love to like, can I bring donuts in the morning? Can I bring taco bar at lunch or do you want me to bring cookies and milk in the afternoon? <laughs> you know what I mean? So you kind of like see what their taste is. If they're, you know, diabetic, maybe you go a different direction, but you know, sorry, I don't mean to make you laugh so hard. We're going to have to finish this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you know, that's kind of the way I do it. I kind of like just see the way that they do it, you know, even more so going back to even pre pre meeting stuff. Uh, one time I, I had a, uh, a client that I was going after. Uh, it was a news, a local news channel. I found out that they are in love with um, uh, insomnia cookie. So I had, uh, I had a an empty box and I threw some swag in there and I threw a card in there that said like, don't think I'm not sweet, but I really want a meeting with you. You know, and it all rhymed and said, if you, if you have a meeting with me, I'll fill this box up with goodies. You know what I mean? So sweet treats or something cute like that. And they were like, oh, th that was dirty, but I love it. Come meet with me. So like I brought cookies, you know what I mean? And a lot of them. So, yeah. you know, that that's kind of that's kind of the way I, I like to do it. Just, you know, again, doing your research. Like I don't even remember who told me that they like insomnia cookies, but it was probably somebody within their organization who I knew who was, you know, getting that meeting with the, my point of contact or their point of contact. So anything you can find out, I mean creep their social media, creep their Instagram. I mean, what, you know, one of the things that I do with my NASCAR stuff is I look at, and, and we've talked about this before. I love companies that have a good social media presence. That means mm -hmm. that they get it. That means that they're forward thinking. They're, they're trying to be creative. They're trying to go outside the box. Uh, they're trying to recreate the box. Um, and, and so like when you look at them and you see what they're doing, I mean, I, like I'm kicking myself right now because I'm not on TikTok. You know what I mean? I know it's not our demographic, but it's getting there. 
It is. And it, yeah. It's totally getting there. And like, I wish I was on clubhouse more. I just, you know, every time you ping me, I come, but like, I'm just so busy being the one man, you know, the one man uh, p- dog and pony show over here. But, um, you know, I, I, I love to, I love to see what they're doing and what they like, and then kind of just tailor, tailor everything to them. I mean, you've got to, you know, people ask me all the time, do you have a website? Well, I do. And it, it's like actually just went live last week. I haven't even, we're still going through some kinks and stuff. Nice. Um, but I don't want to send them to my website. I cringed when I had to ask ESP to, to link the site. Like, that's not your job. That's my job. Mm-hmm. You have more important things to do. Let me go find the koozie and, and make sure you're not getting a, a 39 cent koozie that has poisonous ink and is going to fall apart in a week and is going to go into a drawer. Let me find you a koozie with a message. It's from a, a top 20, like a hit or a best or somebody like that. Let me find that for you. Um, you know, one in print location, set up charges. I, you know, let me, let me do the homework for you. You focus on what you got to do because Lord knows I know you're way busier than going to find a koozie for yourself. Exactly. That is awesome. All right. So you've got so much energy. You've got that good pitch. You got him excited. You did something dope with a, a kind of tricky with an empty box, throwing some swag in there, but always promising something more. So that is kind of what leads me to my last little thing to talk about. One of my favorite shows when it was on was called Suits. Harvey Specter was known as The Closer. I always look at you that way. And so when it's all <laughs> said and done, you've got a great meeting. Everything is cool. You're feeling great. You're driving back home. What's going through your head? What's the next step? Well, if I look like Harvey Specter, there's... There's a lot going through my head. How good looking I am is one of them. That dude, that dude's a G. And the way, the way that he carries himself, you're right. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I, I try to emulate people like that. You know, a lot of people actually used to, used to, and, and without the, the, the um, hashtag me too stuff, Don Draper, you know, yeah. like I look at that guy too. And I'm like, yeah. man, besides the, the misogynistic stuff, he was a G. I mean, he was yeah. a, you know, a, a stone cold killer. And, and then I think there was even one, one time when he, he did have a female come into the office and like had to, you know, kind of work with that. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of that. Uh, what women want. I used to, oh, I used to love that movie. I can't believe I'm saying that. That's embarrassing. But I used to love that freaking movie. It was great. Um, but you know, so once once I have the meeting, uh, you know, again, going back to the meeting, you ask for that second opportunity, and then you try to get to work on it as soon as you can. Obviously, you got to catch up. But um, one of the things that I pride myself in doing is I never let an email go unanswered within a certain amount of time. I don't even know what that time frame looks like. I just don't understand how people, you know, one of the, and one of the best things that I like when, when I send an order to some of my vendors is the uh, order confirmation. I got your order. We're working on it. Cool. All right. Now I know not to worry about that part. So at least get that done and, you know, make sure that, make sure that you, you know, that you have touched them, have, have shown them that you care. Uh, and then, you know, it can be as easy as, Hey, thank you so much for the meeting. Let's, um, give me just a little bit. I'm going to get some virtuals done. Could be 24 to 48 hours. You know, sometimes you want to go higher, obviously, because you never know what's going to happen. You don't want yeah. to disappoint them. So yeah. if you say 72 hours and you know, it's going to be 24 hours, then you look like a hero. So make sure that you're not like under promising, you know, and, or, or over promising and underselling. So, <laughs> right, right. I mean, you want to, you want to make sure you hit it, but you've got your information. You've got their next campaign. Um, you've asked the right questions. Is it an outdoor event? Is it, uh, what's the demographic, the children, the, uh, you know, females, males, you know, what, what's the percentage, what's your price range per person. Uh, and then if you don't have good line of sight to what you want to do, ask your vendors. I mean, it's just that easy. I mean, they're there for you. You know what I mean? And it, and it gives, it, 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 you know, it kind of sub, sub, subliminally tells them like, you're the smarter one in the room. Like, you tell me what the hell I'm supposed to be selling. I mean, I remember going back to the beginning of the pandemic when somebody was like, sell chairs. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, well, because there's no room to sit in the hospital. So they're having chairs outside the hospital now. That's their waiting room. You know what I mean? So like, oh, and then they probably need a tent too. And a sail flag. Yeah. They probably need all that kind of stuff. So you kind of get the ball rolling and, and they know, I mean, what, what are financial buying right now? The banks are closed. The actual inside of the banks are closed. How are they touching their clients? Mm-hmm. What, how are they doing? You know, yesterday at the show, one of the coolest things, I think, I think it was tech world had it. It was a little maze and it said go, like, go be amazing or something, you know, so cute and kitschy like that. Another one, um, I think that uh, it was Pearson or somebody like that. Had, he was a multi-line. He had the little, um, 
the little highlighter hand, uh, you know, and he goes, here, hand this to him. Can't wait to high five you next year. Yep. I mean, whew, brilliant. And it's a, it's, it's, it's a koozie with a message. You know what I mean? Now it's a highlighter with a message. You're saying something to them and you're saying you care and you can't wait to, to see them and you can't wait to be with them and, and be back like normal. I mean, I always go back to, I like, I, I mean, they don't have to be my best friends, but I like them to be friendly with me. You know what I mean? And I want to know about them. I want them to know, you know, what, what I, I remember I used to, uh, uh, I had an apparel program that I worked on for about six to eight months or something like that. Didn't end up going with getting it because of budgetary reasons with one of my companies. Um, but, um, you know, they, I would give her popcorn and she, I would say, just, can I pop in today? And she loved that. She would call me. Are you popping in today? I'm like, hell yeah. With butter, <laughs> with cheddar. I mean, whatever, you know? So, uh, or, you know, if you maybe need to pick up the check with that cheddar, <laughs> I know ridiculous, right? <laughs> Dude. So we got some comments here in Facebook. Thank you everybody for watching too. And putting your comments over on the side. Manny says, hello from Puerto Rico. Uh, Jessica Baxter Miller says, Hey, Hey, uh, Terry Compton gives us the thumbs up. So everybody's watching today. And then Jessica over at gold star says, Nadav is cracking me up today. So, uh, <laughs> You guys, if you're watching this and you're watching how Nadav is acting on this video, this is how he is in real life. This is actually Nadav. When he says he's going to ask all of those questions, he probably asks those questions just as fast as he puts them into this video. And people respond to that. Don't be afraid. He's got that confidence to go in there that if knows the worst thing they can say to you, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're, one one of one of my one of my best friends taught me a long time ago. When I was selling like I was managing those door to door knockers, and he uh, out in California, and it was miserable, hot. You're, you're you know you're not wanted there. Uh, and he said, "Learn to love the no." And once you do, man, it opens up a whole new world for you because mm -hmm. every no gets me closer to a yes. And once you realize that handcuffs come off. Yep. You know, your inhibitions come off and you're so what you're right. Like you said, they said, no. Oh, well, what's next? What's you know, next? move on. You get yeah. a big order. Great. Wonderful. Celebrate for two seconds. Move on. That's awesome. Well, so you talked a lot about LinkedIn and Facebook and uh, kind of not stalking your clients, but definitely educating yourself on clients. So how can people reach you? Does it, is it just your name? Do you have a specific handle? I know there's a <laughs> oh, hashtag I that I think you use too. <laughs> hashtag promo never sleeps, baby. Um, so yeah, and now all my self promos have follow me at amplify underscore marketing underscore solutions. Uh, hashtag promo never sleeps, uh, you know, because I really want to be a brand, right? I want to create myself as a brand. I want, when you see the target logo, you think target, when you see, you know, when you want to Google something, you go to Google, you don't go to askjeeves.com anymore. Nobody does. You know, when you want to buy a Coke, you could be getting a Sprite or a Dr. Pepper, but you're going to get a Coke at the store. So I want, when people think promo, they think Nadav. I mean, shh, yesterday I had like, this is, you know, this is the world I, we live in. You know this. Uh, client was like, oh, forgot to order some cups for an event. Uh, need them on Friday. I said, give me a little bit of time. I talked to Leprechaun over in Atlanta. One day ship. We can do it. Great. Wonderful. They've ordered promo products from somebody else, obviously, for whatever event they have this weekend. And um, now I might have an opportunity with the rest of their stuff. They might not be huge, but it also... It also makes me, and again, try not to take things personally. Obviously, you know, it's, it's business and some things can't happen, but always have solutions if it doesn't happen. I can have coasters printed locally. I know I can do that. That's easy enough. Or something printed locally, then it's a nice little giveaway. But I mean, that being said, you know, I want to make sure that the people who are referring me, and that's how 90% of my business is coming in right now. I don't even have to prospect. Well, I guess social media is really prospecting for me because people are like, oh, I saw your picture at the beach. I need to quote on some towels just like that one. And that's that's how that's how you do it. I mean, and, 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 and somebody was like, why are you always doing that? I said, this is exactly why, Sean, boom. She said, give me a quote on those towels from the beach. So, you know, you, so I want to make sure that everybody's referring me and everybody, all my vendors and everybody in our industry are, are proud of the, the, the activities that we do and, the, and the, the, 
quality and the trustworthiness that we instill in ourselves and, and want to pass along to our peers and to our clients and everything like that. I mean, just be 100. I mean, you know, if you can't get it done, you can't get it done, but find them a solution at least, you know, something can be done. Love it, man. I love it. We got one last comment on here. Alan Leston says, Nadav, you know who you think when you see beast. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I haven't uh, linked up with him yet, but he, great guy. He's, he's starting his own company recently. Um, and I was at a show yesterday and uh, it was Berkey, uh, you know, Berkey, Berkey's dad was over there and, and he was showing me, he's like, here's the Yeti. And then here's the knockoff. It's called the beast. And I, I sent him a text this morning. I'm like, bro, if you don't have these as so promos, I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> Hell, I'll buy them for you. Just so I have them. <laughs> yeah, Alan, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Well, we are getting towards the end here. So yeah, hashtag promo never sleeps. Go and check out Nadav and all of his work. And to wrap it kind of up, hey, Nadav, what do you do for work? I don't. <laughs> Everything's a passion, man. People, people don't get it. Like, I, I don't know. I kind of, I had this conversation last night at dinner with my parents, you know, which is great. Cause now I'm half vaccinated and they're fully vaccinated. And, um, I can actually go talk to them and, and hang out with them. I haven't given them a hug and kiss yet. Just being, you know, a little social distance till I get the final one. Can't wait for that to happen, by the way, just so I can get, get back to normal. But, um, you know, I, I, I told him, you know, it's like, it's like my dad has this work ethic where nine to five is not even a thing. You know, it's w when you wake up, you know, as soon as it starts, you start going on with it. And that my work is my passion. My passion is my work. And, and it, it's nothing. I mean, it, when you enjoy what you do, I mean, yesterday after three groups at the SPPA show, my brain was like literally melting and oozing out of my ears. I could feel it. I'm like, man, my brain hurts right here. I don't have a headache. My brain hurts. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, you know, it, it, when it's like that, it's not even work. So I don't work. I, 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 live my passion. That is awesome. Guys, as Nadav says, go out there and live your passion. Thank you so much, Nadav, for joining us today, man. It was a pleasure and it's always so much fun. Yep. Humbled and thankful. Thank you so much. Awesome. That's Express Training Bites on this Thursday. We will see you next Thursday for another episode. Have a great weekend, you guys.